I just need to double check my microphone is working because today I recorded a 25 minute so rare video and my mic was not on and I am absolutely fuming about it. It was an awesome video. I spoke all about my plans for the summer and people I want to buy and sell and stuff like that. It was sick, all right? It was just the best video ever, obviously. It was going to be the 1 million view video on this channel and my mic wasn't on. And I can't recreate that. You know, it's one of those things that happens once and you just simply cannot recreate it. And I am very upset. I almost jumped straight into my bath, toaster in hand. I was livid. In all seriousness though, I did record a video. I was really upset. So I thought we'd just do a lineup video and I'll make my video over the weekend about, you know, my summer plans and whatnot because we've got plenty of time until the summer, baby. All right, let's jump into it. Now, midweek lineups, we actually have a little rare card. I'm actually quite excited. I've not, I, I've genuinely actually not won a rare card for a little while. Um, when was the last rare card I won? Oh, actually it was only like two game weeks ago, but like, still, wait, I want to, uh, wait, did I? Who, oh, mascara, of course I did. I, like, I'm not gonna lie, that feels like a long time ago though. It's been like two weeks, right? It feels like a long time ago. Um, and that's if this holds, by the way. It says it's going to, but that's if it holds. We're only like three two places in a reward here it's going to be like one of the worst tier fives you could possibly get but i'm not complaining i'm actually very happy uh manfred ugalde came out with the absolutely stellar performance i'm a little bit like we're gonna get to this 20 game in a minute but like if you guys see the second big chance missed which i'm not really complaining about because it was a big chance created apparently for smell like it was a crazy tight angle uh goalies come out like it's just not a big chance missed but Opta love to Opta and this guy got clearance off the line because of it. Um, anyway Yeah, so good start for the under 23 uh, Players that we brought in obviously Aidan Morris and Julian Carranza uh, Mascara is a player that I won so I'm very happy with the start they had although Carranza hit the bar in the literal first minute pretty much open net uh, and Aidan Morris didn't really get you know, I, I'm quite happy. 51, I think, is decent. Um, especially during, like, the summer with summer under 23s. Like, a 51, it's pretty average for him. He does like, he likes to get the 60s and sometimes super high scores. But I'm actually really happy with that. It's pretty decent, to be fair. Um, it's one of the things with, with the summer. Um, oh, I just realized his birthday's the day before mine. Uh, sorry, I don't know. <laughs> I have ADHD, if you can't tell. Um, yeah, so, uh, what was I saying? Summer under 23s. I feel like there aren't the um, the same amount of locked summer under 23s, right? You have players like Almada, who is an insane, like, I don't even know what the word I'm looking for is, anomaly. Who, the reason why I'm scared of this guy, because I think he moves, but if he doesn't move, like, he's one of the most consistent players you can get, right? You have Cucho Hernandez, who's one that I would love to buy, but the only issue with Cucho is that he ages out um, in literally a month a month yesterday so it's like you get four weeks of under 23 utility i just don't think that's worth like 0.4 eth in my opinion you know um and outside of that in terms of like your under 23 players in in like let's just let's just look at america because asia for me is again like one i just i'm a bit, a bit nervous to delve into right like you you don't have a huge amount of insane players i mean alvarado is actually pretty good um but the thing with Alvarado, like, I don't like buying players like this because I haven't got the faintest idea about the Liga Pro. I don't even know what league that is. Is it the Colombian League? I don't know. And then people are saying, you know, 72% to start, 28% to bench. To me, like, it's just not worth the risk for me. And his his scoring is crazy. And he also ages out, of course. But, like, his scoring is crazy. He is doing insane things. But for me, personally, like, I just... I don't like taking risks on anomalies. Especially considering with a lot of these, like... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, I guess, like, like obscure leagues. Um, he's just... Yeah, for me, it's like a little, it's a little bit too nerve wracking and I don't really like getting involved in it. Uh, and of course you have players like Tolkien who's come out of nowhere in my opinion, like not come out of nowhere, but like, I just I didn't realize how good he was, but he's like, he's actually pretty decent, man. Um, and obviously he's doing really well at the moment. And again, like another one you can kind of look at and get a little bit more, a um, little bit more of a, a judgment whether it'll start or not, because I think the MLS is a little bit more predictable. Um, and then of course you have, one of the more consistent players on the entire platform, Palacios. This guy's issue is he just does not get decisives, bro. 
Like, and granted, every now and then he gets AA game, almost more than a decisive game for a lot of players. But like, yeah, for me, like, I don't know. I love the consistency. And if I won him, I wouldn't sell him. I would use him. I just, this card makes me a bit nervous with like, not nervous, but like, you can't win a division with these scores if, if he's only getting these 60s, right? And I know that sounds a bit stupid, but it's like, ultimately, is that not what we're here for? I don't know. Anyway, that's just like my thoughts. Again, I'll make a whole video on this uh, at the weekend, but they're kind of my, my thoughts. And that's why I'm really happy with like a player like Aiden Morris. Because um, I just think he's a really consistent player in those 50s and whatnot. And again, you're probably thinking, I've just contradicted myself, Ryan. Like, you just said a 60 and a 50 is not enough to win a division. That's very true. But he does put up these 100-point scores every now and then. And a decisive for this man is a almost guaranteed dark green score which is why i really like him i mean he's had dark green score like an 87 based off aa alone is just nuts to me you know anyway um so that we, we hopefully have a tier five coming tomorrow um with uh this midweek lineup and then um like very very unfortunate because if we don't concede the goal we conceded, and I say we because I've watched this game with my FC20 shirt on and genuinely cheered Cherny and Ugalde when they scored. And they had, like, I wasn't doing it because I had uh, Ugalde in my lineup. I did it because I genuinely felt passion for 20. It was weird. Um, I loved it though. Um, yeah, so this one was really annoying though. Um, if we didn't concede the goal we conceded, we get what? So a clean sheet would have would have been a 60 plus plus 9 AA, so like 69. So we're saying that's an extra 48 points, plus an extra 14 here. Uh, 62 points, 60, 71-ish points with, with bonus. Like, we're, we're podiuming almost. Now, granted, doesn't guarantee, because we also get, a, we get plus two there, like 73 points. We probably come, we probably come third. I'm not going to lie. We probably do come third because uh, uh, I'm thinking about all the other players and, and people that had these same sort of players, but it's unlikely they had the same other players I had because Vita Van Kroep up a lovely score. Zeruki banged as well, like amazing score from him. Um, so it's really unfortunate because the goal that Udastal conceded, in my opinion, like, I don't know why this does this. Like, this is, this is the way I see it, okay? So... In my opinion, I think Opta are right to give it as an error. But in from a football sense, from sort I've played football my entire life, right? And I've been a striker my entire life. And like I can hit a ball really well. Like I can I can strike a football quite and I'm not trying to sound like an arrogant prick. I'm fat, all right? Everyone knows that. Like you can look at me and say, right, he doesn't look like a footballer. But like, I mean, like I I I, I typically film a lot of my football sessions and like I can hit a, the one thing I can do really well is hit a football, right? I've always been really good at hitting a football. Um and I can hit a knuckleball. All right. I'm not gonna lie to you. I know Unastal is a professional goalie. We're just watching my football clips because I'm an arrogant prick who thinks he's great at football. Um I know Unastal is a professional footballer and he probably should have done better with that. But when you have limited visibility and it's a knuckleball like that, it is so difficult. I don't know why we're still watching these clips, by the way. Just, yeah. It is so, so, so difficult for a goalkeeper to actually save that. I know that sounds crazy and you can have a lot... Like, I, I agree that it should be an error because I think he should be doing better there. But also, like, I like I wouldn't be mad. If I was a 20 fan, I wouldn't be mad about conceding that, you know? I am a 20 fan and I'm not mad about conceding it. I'm wondering, like, if we can watch this. I, this might get my video taken down. I have no idea. Um, I'm wondering if we can see an angle over here. All right, p perfect angle. So, first of all, his vision is blocked by smell, right? When the ball moves out of the way here, it started off It started off in the middle of him and moves out of the way. I don't know if it comes across well on camera or not, but when the ball like moves like that in the air, it's so hard to predict. And he's already expected the ball to come closer to him. So he's, he's the ball realistically should have, if it didn't knuckle, stops where his arms are. And like, because it knuckles and moves in the air, I don't know. Like, I, like what I'm trying to say, I do think it is an error. But also, I don't feel like I feel bad for him because that's such a difficult shot to save. It's like knuckleballs are so, especially with limited visibility, they're crazy, man. I don't know why I'm even I, like I literally do not know who I'm arguing with right now. Like I'm literally making a whole argument as if you guys in the comments are going to disagree with me. I don't know who I'm arguing against. I'm, I'm literally fighting demons right now. What, I don't know what I'm doing. The point I'm making is I am not angry about missing out on a podium for that error because like that is not an error, bro. That is just really unfortunate. Anyway, we do get a tier five, hopefully rare tomorrow, which uh, I'm not going to do a reward video for one tier five rare because it's going to be someone crappy. I mean, if we look at like, if we actually look at the, um, 
Does that have me? Yeah, 70 second. Uh, if we look at like the tier five pool, it's going to be one of the literal bottom players as well. Like it's going to be card worth nothing. But the reason why I quite like winning these kind of cards, right? I have never heard of any of these guys. I have no idea who they are. I'd love for it to be someone that's actually in America that played or, or Asia, right? But the thing that I love about winning these random ass like tier five rares is that any under 23 can get a favorable move somewhere and become a half decent player that you play with a good matchup. Um, I'm trying to think of an example off the top of my head. I think Paulinho is actually a pretty good example, right? So this guy at uh, Leverkusen was the definition of mid, right? B bench player most of the time. When he did play, was not getting huge scores. Scored the very odd game here and there. Get to loan move. And I'm not going to pretend like he's a great player now, but like he is, he's doing all right. You know, like he's getting dark green scores every now and then. Um, he's a starter. My point is, like, that's why I enjoy uh, under 23, even tier fives, because you could just get someone that could randomly get a move to like the middle of nowhere or like, I don't know, like the, the, whatever league and and actually be a half decent player there so even though it's going to be someone terrible worth nothing i'm kind of excited anyway should we get into the part you guys actually care about which are this week's upcoming lineups i have 12 teams to go through um i guess we can start off with like our semi-pro teams i don't really have any clue um about any of these lineups i'll be honest with you because like any dmp can happen um uh, but that's serious semi-pro again like so if if any any DMP can happen here. I've gone with uh, Mignon and Teo Hernandez because I think they've got a pretty favorable matchup here against Verona at home. Then I've got, obviously, I only have one limited from the city, and it is Bragi. Then I've got Piscina and Osman. So we'll see what happens there. French League semi pro. Again, anyone can get benched here. Like, you know, the the second goalkeeper from Ren could randomly play last game of the season. Like, who knows? I think Mbappe will start, though. Um, then we have La Liga semi-pro. Once again, everyone's a DMP risk. I have no idea. And MLS semi-pro, I'm pretty confident on. Although, Yaimar didn't play the midweek. I'm hoping he just got rested. I don't actually know. I didn't really Google it. I think it's a bit too late now, isn't it? Yaimar. He put up a fantastic score the week before that, though. Uh, well, he's 100% to start, apparently. Yeah, he's just on the bench. I'm guessing he just got rested midweek. Um, which is a bit unfortunate, but you know, he is 30. And what's funny is like, he, like this photo of him here, I can't lie. When you actually watch him play, he looks so old, bro. He looks tired sometimes. He's actually a really, really solid uh, defender. He's like the exact kind of center back I like. He's just an absolute meat house that will run through anyone. But he looks tired, bro. So I get why he was benched. Um, I'm hoping, though, that at home against Portland Timbers, it's a solid game. Seattle Sounders at home seem to perform really, really well. Um, I'm guessing, like, Yaimar is no exception. If we go um, Major League Soccer and we take away all of these... Yeah, I mean, you can see, I, like, a t the traveling tax on a on a team is crazy, bro, in the MLS. It's nuts. Uh, then we have Mukhtar away at Dallas. It's not far to travel, though. Um, and then we have Savarino away at Aust Austin. I don't know how far away Salt Lake City is from Austin. I have no idea. What, what state is Salt Lake? Is Salt Lake City a state? I, I have no idea. Anyway, um, so... Let's get on to the juicy ones. Captain 70 Rare is actually a total throwaway because I don't know if Davidson's going to start or not. I don't know if he's back from injury. I have no idea. I looked I looked for information. I find it impossible to find information because I don't know how to spell his name in Chinese. And a lot of the Chinese like sources that I've found often like spell their name in Chinese. And it's just, uh, yeah, I don't know. Because Google Translate doesn't actually get it right. So I have no idea. Um, but like the thing is about this one, I'm almost half tempted to like buzzer be to pick up a defender in any from america and then make a champion america rare team and to try and win a tier five because walter and nacho fernandez and palinia should all play i don't know about palinia against cruzero i kind of hope he doesn't score because i want marlon to ball out but we'll see um i'm in two minds with that one i might buzzer beater like change that to be honest uh then we have cap 240 rare mere i don't know if he's gonna play or not he's completely 50 50 apparently people are like they don't know whether he's gonna play or not i have no idea whether he'll, whether he'll play or not he's like apparently completely 50 50 so i'm just kind of like i don't know if he plays w because he's actually got a low l15 in comparison to my other goalkeepers and he's likely going to keep a clean sheet then we have oiwa who apparently is 100 to start don't know kisum young Strafeza, who's apparently got a triple-A matchup, and then Lee Myung-Joo. My biggest issue at the moment is um, 
players like Ki Sung Young, Lee Myung Ju, and Kazuki Oiwa, I just don't know anything about. So I trust So Red Data and Play Sharper. And sometimes they get it wrong. So it's like, you know, I don't know. I don't really have hope. That's why, to me, Captain 40 Rare in game weeks like this is a bit of a throwaway. Um, however, in the future, I might try and prioritize it as well as Captain 40 Super Rare. Um, then we have All Star Rare, which is a really nice lineup, in my opinion. We have Severa, away to Ibar. I don't expect a clean sheet, but he is capable of getting some really good AA against difficult opponents. Then we have Felix Backer at home to uh, Cash Point Altec. Interesting. Uh, yeah. um, we have Romulo at home to, uh, sorry, away to uh, Shanghai, who are a really good team, but I'm hoping he can do something against them. Cecilia at home to Seoul or Seoul. And then we have Alano away to Avispa Fukuoka, who, is that not their team? No, he's Shohan Belmer. Shonan. Shonan Bel Belmar. Belmar. Shut up, Brian. Anyway, Captain 40 Super Rare. We have got Murajige. Asano, Douglas Vieira, and Azevedo. Almost a full Asia Super Rare team here. And by almost, I mean three out of five. So it's actually just 60%. Um, yeah. So I don't know if I need to like... I'm quite tired, by the way. If you can't tell by the, t by the time, it's, it's actually nearly 5 a.m. I don't know why my... Usually my eyes don't get this tired, though. They're quite closed. Let me do that. That's a little bit better. Um, yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't have a goalkeeper for this week, so that's super rare. So we'll just see what happens with this one. Um, if we get the threshold, that's a massive W. Unlikely this four get the threshold. I would say even if I had a goalie that kept a clean sheet, it's very unlikely we get the threshold with this four. Unless Azevedo scores, Douglas Vieira scores, Asano scores, and Murashige hits one of his one out of ten game 70s. Very, very unlikely we get the threshold. But a man can dream. A man can dream. Um, Challenger Europe Rare Pro is a very interesting one to me. We have got Van der at home to Antwerp, who I don't think he was a clean sheet, but could get a 50-game AA. Then we have Robin Proper at home to Heron Veen, who I think should get a nice score against him. He did very well against him away, so I'm hoping it's a game where he just eats AA. We have Naboa away to Ural. I, I think I will probably no longer have Naboa next season, so it's kind of one of his... Like, it's just a last game in my gallery. Uh, Naboa has been quality for me, but like... Since his injury and coming back from his injury, he hasn't really hit those heights as he used to. He used to be, in my opinion, one of uh, the most underrated midfielders on the platform. He was getting like incredible scores in the Russian league, and then like then he got injured, uh, kind of pre World Cup, missed the last two games of the season, uh, sorry, the year, uh, came back, hit a big score, and then it's kind of like not been great since. I'm hoping he can have one one more like last like Ura, you know, uh, last time they played Ural. Um, he actually got 68, so you never know. We'll see. Um, Pansil, uh, last game of the season against Antwerp. Pansil is capable of getting nice scores, man. Uh, he got a really nice score uh, last week, and it's gutting because whenever I don't play him in a, in a lineup, that's priority, he gets a nice score. Whenever I do, he gets the mid scores. Like, he is capable of getting some serious scores. I am hoping to see this kind of form next season as well. They just need to bring in, like, a better striker because he benefited massively from uh, from Big Paul Onoachu and uh, and hasn't really benefited since they got rid of him. So I'm hoping, you know, like, we can see a nice score from him. He did pretty well against uh, Club Bruges um, both times they played. Did really well against uh, Anderlecht. Didn't do great against Antwerp last time, uh, but he did create a big chance I wasn't finished off, so it could have been a different story. I'm hoping against Antwerp this time he can do really, really well. Um, and then we have Manfred Ugalde, who I absolutely love. I think he's a, such a quality, quality footballer. Um, he did really, really well against Heron Vane away, and I'm hoping he can do the same again. When he gets a good stretch of games in the starting 11, he absolutely balls out. Um, and I think next season, if they can sign him on a permanent, he'll be fantastic. He is a player that I rate really highly. Um, um, he's quick. He's got a great ability to head the ball. He can jump super high and challenge players that are a lot taller than him. Uh, but also, like, he's great at snapshots as well. One thing I love about strikers, being a striker myself, because I'm obviously, like, the same level. No, but, like, one thing I admire a lot is, like, snapshots and stuff. And if a player can, like take the ball to his feet and hit a quick snapshot and catch keeper off guard. I love it. It's just sick, right? So like, yeah, Manfred Ugalde is in the team. This is a team that I think could get a tier two. I really do. Like, I truly believe, like, the only thing is, is that this weekend there's not that many um, games, right, in Challenger Europe. There's like, 
not a huge amount of games so the prize pool this week is actually quite small in comparison to like previous weeks i'm pretty sure usually it goes up to like the top 60s but like i believe in this team you know it's definitely po- i don't know actually 20 have got a mad good matchup it's probably not probably not gonna well we can hope a man can dream all right a man can dream i think definitely like pansil super rare and nabo is rare are definitely like outliers a little bit they're definitely like, differentials a little bit uh then we move into the fun stuff under 23 rare i haven't gone rare pro i do have super rare mckenzie and super rare vermeeran who i might regret not using but i haven't gone rare pro i've gone with rare and again i might regret it i hope i don't regret it if i had another goalkeeper that i could r- use in uh challenger i would have like if i if i had another goalie that was playing in challenger like for example i don't had a game i would make an underneath free rare pro team as well it's a challenger europe team sorry i'm burping that's disgusting man um i do apologize but i don't so we've gone underneath free rare only and i do hope i don't regret using mckenzie and vermeeran because whenever i don't use mckenzie the guy scores a goal bro it's stupid anyway um I'm excited about this lineup. It's a really good lineup, in my opinion. We have Sam Freke at home to like 14th in the league, uh, Kyoto Sanga. Then we have Cincinnati at home to Chicago Fire. We have uh, Columbus Crew at home to Charlotte. We have Philadelphia Union at home to CF Montreal. And then we have Jeremy Doku away to Stade Brestois, who are a, a not a great team as well. So, like, these are good matchups, man. I'm very excited about it. Then we have Champion America Rare Pro, the, the debut of my boy Tequino Suarez, who I'm hoping can do really well against Atletico Perinate. Perenayense, who they just played in the cup actually midweek. He did play a full 120 minutes. I don't know if that's going to impact him playing on Saturday as well. Saturday at 10 30 p.m. Oof, they did play on Wednesday and they did go 120 minutes. I'm hoping he'll play. I like I don't know. What, what let me see if so red data have, have have updated his like potential uh starting. 100% of people reckon he starts. Okay, fair enough. So we'll see. He did actually miss his first penalty in the penalty shootout as well. It's really unfortunate, but he did score a goal in that game as well. So fingers crossed. We have Marlon at home to uh, Let's Go Monero, who I think sh- he should be decent against. He seems to thrive against difficult opponents. He gets a lot of tackles, a lot of interceptions, a lot of duels won. That's how he racks up a lot of his AA. So I'm kind of hoping and praying that he can do really well there. We have River Plate at home to uh, Defensa y Justicia. Look, Armani has got to pick the fucking pace up, man. This guy is starting to really piss me off. I'm tempted to, like get rid of him bring somebody else in soon um he just does not keep clean sheets at the moment after an amazing run of them so like they kept clean sheets against some difficult opponents in a good run i'm hoping they can do it again i hope that like a home game like can hopefully like you know get them playing well again we'll see like you know they kept a clean sheet at home against Boca, and and we'll see what happens so yeah fingers crossed and we have joao paulo who a lot of people seem to think he won't start on so red data he he has just had a suspension he's back it was only a one game suspension um he is amazing at home as well it was his red card was so like his red card was genuinely heartbreaking because not only did it stop me getting a reward for that week um but like he was on for such a great game as well because he had uh he, in 75 minutes he'd racked up uh 33.4 aa now you can also like the annoying thing is it doesn't show when he got a yellow card but he definitely did get a yellow card and then a second yellow like it wasn't a red card it was definitely a second yellow um like he did second yellow card to Joao Paulo for a bad foul um so yeah it's like it's one of those where it's quite unfortunate because he probably would have got like a 70 something which would have been lovely because that would have been nearly 100 with the bonus so yeah um and then Carlos Hill who's just an absolute baller Carlos Hill is the man Carlos Hill scored with the first kick first kick New England revs kick of the game and the last New England revs kick of the game against Atlanta it was it was magical shout out Braguzan for the assist um so yeah, I, I'm hoping that he can do well against New York, who aren't in great form at the minute. That's a lineup I am very excited about. I've played it in Champion America Rare Pro instead of All Star Rare Pro because, like, truth be told, if I was to win a Tier Two or a Tier One, which is like the dream, I don't think I'll win the whole division with this lineup. But you never know. Obviously, a man can dream. But let's say I won like a Tier Two, right? A lot of the cards in this pool would be so useful, so useful for the summer, like. I would, I usually, when I open rewards, I'm like, no goalie, no goalie. I would welcome a goalie right now. Or literally, like, any of these cards, really. Like, genuinely, like, I would love it. So that's why I, uh, I'm focusing in Champion America Rare Pro. And I'm going to be putting this team into Champion America Rare Pro. I think 
for or like an iteration of this for a good couple of weeks as well because i would like to try and focus that tournament for a couple of weeks to try and like build out my gallery of free rewards if i can get lucky um obviously with different iterations of it like i would like to try and focus that a little bit more so i can try and build out my gallery with summer cards if that makes sense so yeah and then all-star rare pro we have got the twenty stack with Messi and Vito Van Croy, who's an absolute baller, pen taker and everything. So really, really good. Um, we have Unastyle, Smal, Zaruki, Lionel Messi at home to Clement and uh, Vito Van Croy at home to Utrecht, who uh, obviously Utrecht won't be an easy game, but I'm hoping Sparta at home can do really, really well. Um, so yeah, we'll sort of see how that goes. I'm super excited for it. Anyway, they are my lineups. Any opinions, all all feedback, everything like that is, is absolutely massively appreciated. Um, I am going to bed pretty late, so I'm probably not going to wake up in time for the uh, for the uh, uh, cut off. I forget what it's called, the lock. I can't lie. I'll probably be up at like 2, 3 p.m. because I've just been stupid and stayed up super late. So like, yeah, I might. If, if you guys have vital information for me and I miss it, it's because I'm fat. Um, but I appreciate you guys watching the video. Thank you all very much for all your support on this channel. It's been crazy. Um, the fact that these videos get like a thousand views each and we only have 700 subs in this channel is crazy. I absolutely love it. The main thing I love about it is that it's just like an area for me to talk to you guys about so rare because i love talking about so rare but the problem is i have a very casual football slash fifa audience on my other social platforms that do not give less of a fuck about so rare to be honest with you i'm being brutally honest i just don't care and it's really hard to try and push like oh i want to talk about so rare here there and everywhere because they just don't really care that much and it's quite frustrating because like i just don't get the same numbers when talking about so rare on there as i do with it like football my united or fifa um so this platform is awesome I'm I might make a so rare dedicated twitter as well um so that i can like kind of discuss so rare with you guys and literally only post about so rare too um yeah i think that's a good idea actually i might do that um but yeah just appreciate you guys watching really thank you all. if you made it to the end of the video you're a fucking legend 28 minutes like get a life seriously how are you watching me how are you sat there listening to me ramble for 29 minutes of your life like you saddo <laughs> seriously i love you thank you very much uh enjoy your days enjoy your weekends genuinely hope all of you win the best rewards bar first place because that's reserved for me and i'll catch you guys on the flip side